In this video, we will go over free response question number six from the 2010 AP Calculus exam, Form B. Two particles move along the x-axis. For t between 0 and 6, the position of particle p at time t is given by this formula, while the position of particle r at time t is given by this formula. Part A. For t between 0 and 6, find all times t during which particle r is moving to the right. We know that a particle will be moving to the right when its velocity is positive. So particle r is moving to the right when r prime of t is greater than 0. So let's find the velocity r prime and see where it is greater than 0. So using the power rule, we have uh, 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. So this is the velocity. Let's find where this velocity is equal to 0. I'm noticing that all of these terms are divisible by 3. So dividing both sides of the equation by 3, we have uh, t squared minus 4t plus 3 is equal to 0. We can factor this t squared will only factor as t times t, 3 will only factor as 3 times 1. To get the negative 4t in the middle, we need a minus 3 and a minus 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, so that checks out. Using the zero product property, we can uh, solve this by setting each factor equal to 0. That will give us t is equal to 3 and t is equal to 1. So these are the two values of t for which the velocity is 0. Let's make a sign chart and find out where the velocity will be negative and positive. So here are my t values of 1 and 3 here and here. I also included the endpoints of 0 and 6 that we were given. Make sure you label your sign chart as r prime of t and make a row for each factor. So I have a row for t minus 1 and t minus 3. Well, we know that the factor of t minus 1 equals 0 when t is equal to 1. For values of t less than 1, t minus 1 will be negative. For example, if t was 0, then we would have negative 1. For values of t that are greater than 1, t minus 1 will be positive. t minus 3 is equal to 0 when t is equal to 3. For values of t less than 3, t minus 3 is negative. For values of t greater than 3, t minus 3 is positive. What about the overall sign of r prime? In this first interval between 0 and 1, we have a negative times a negative, so that's positive. In the next interval, we have a positive times a negative, which is negative. In the last interval, positive times a positive is a positive. So we see that the velocity r prime is positive between 0 and 1 and between 3 and 6. So those are the intervals where uh, the particle r is moving to the right. Let's just write that up. So here's our summary. Particle r is moving to the right for the interval from 0 to 1 and the interval from 3 to 6 because r prime is positive. Make sure you include that justification. For the closed interval from 0 to 6, find all times t during which the two particles travel in opposite directions. We know that particles r and p will be traveling in opposite directions when their velocities, r prime and p prime, have opposite signs. In part a, we already determined where r prime is positive and negative. Let's do the same for p prime. So let's take the derivative of p of t. p prime of t will equal, uh, let's bring down the 2, 
the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to put that negative in the front. So we have negative 2 sine of pi over 4t. So of course the chain rule applies. We have to multiply by the derivative of the function on the inside. The derivative of pi over 4t is pi over 4. I'm going to simplify this a little bit with the negative 2 and the pi over 4. So now we have the equation of the velocity of particle p. We need to figure out when this velocity is equal to 0 for the sine chart. So setting this equal to 0, um, we can divide both sides by negative pi over 2. So that gives us sine of pi over 4 t is equal to 0. Well, let's solve this for pi over 4 t. So where is the sine function equal to 0? Sine is the y value on the unit circle, so that's going to equal 0 here at 0 and here at pi. So that means pi over 4t equals 0 or pi over 4t is equal to pi. Let's solve both of these. Multiplying both sides of the first equation by 4 over pi gives us t is equal to 0. Multiplying the second equation on both sides by 4 over pi, notice that these pi's cancel out, so we get t is equal to 4. You have to be careful when you're solving a trig equation. I said that sine would equal 0 at 0 and pi, and that's true. But why did I stop at one revolution around the unit circle? Why didn't I keep going? Well, let's see what happens if we go one more position. Sine will also equal 0 at 2 pi. I've gone all the way around and back to this position. So let's think of this as 2 pi now. That means that uh, pi over 4t would equal 2 pi. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 4 over pi. Okay, these pi's are going to cancel each other out. And that will leave us with t is equal to 8, right? I'm doing this 2 times 4. So is this a new solution? Well, not quite. We're dealing with a restricted interval where the t value is between 0 and 6. So if we go any further, we're getting t values outside of the interval, outside of the domain. Time to make the sign chart. We have t equals 0 and t equals 4, so those are on the sign chart. Also, 0 and 6 are the endpoints. I made a row for the factor of negative pi over 2 and a row for the other factor of sine pi over 4t. Of course, negative pi over 2 is negative in every interval, so we can mark that off very quickly. What about the sine of pi over 4t? In this first interval, let's use a test value of 1. If we let t equals 1, then we just have sine of pi over 4, which we know is radical 2 over 2, positive radical 2 over 2. Now we need to pick a value of t between 4 and 6. Well, what about t equals 5? If t is 5, if you multiply pi over 4 times 5, that's just 5 pi over 4. So now we're talking about the sine of 5 pi over 4. The reference angle is still pi over 4, so that tells us that the sine of this angle will be radical 2 over 2, except um, it might be negative, depending on the quadrant. But 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant, sine, being a y value, is negative in the third quadrant. So the sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2. So we have a negative. What about the overall velocity, p prime of t? In the first uh, interval, we have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. In the second interval, we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. Now let's make an overlapping sine chart so we can directly compare the signs of r prime and p prime. 
Remember that r prime is positive between 0 and 1. So let's record this on the new sign chart. It is negative between 1 and 3. So it's going to be negative right here. And then r prime is positive between 3 and 6. So that's going to include both of these intervals. On the other hand, p prime is negative between 0 and 4. So that's going to include all three of these intervals. And then p prime is positive between 4 and 6, which is right here. Remember, we were interested in finding the intervals where r prime and p prime have opposite signs, meaning that the particles are traveling in opposite directions. Well, we see opposite signs in this interval and this interval. So let's go ahead and write up our summary. So here's our summary. Particles R and P are traveling in opposite directions for the interval from 0 to 1 and the interval from 3 to 4 because R prime and P prime have opposite signs. Make sure you include this justification. Part C, find the acceleration of particle P at time t equals 3. Is particle P speeding up, slowing down, or doing neither at time t equals 3? Explain your reasoning. We can find the acceleration equation by taking the derivative of this velocity equation. So P double prime at t equals, I'm going to leave the negative pi over 2 sitting out front. Uh, the derivative of sine is cosine, so I have cosine pi over 4t, but because we have this inner function, I need to do the chain rule, so I'm multiplying by the derivative of pi over 4t, which is simply pi over 4. Now I'm going to combine the uh, negative pi over 2 and the pi over 4 and put that in the front. So here is the formula for acceleration. Let's find the acceleration at time t equals 3. So that will be p double prime at 3, which will equal negative pi squared over 8 times the cosine. Well, if t is 3, this will simply become 3 pi over 4. What is the cosine of 3 pi over 4? The cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant where cosine is negative. So the value of this part is going to be negative uh, radical 2 over 2. So I'm going to bring down the negative pi squared over 8. And uh, if I multiply these together, the negatives will cancel each other out. So this is the acceleration of particle p at time t equals 3. Notice that this is positive. The other question that we are being asked is whether p is speeding up, slowing down, or doing neither. Well, that will depend on whether the velocity and acceleration have the same sign. Uh, we already see that the acceleration at t equals 3 is positive. If the velocity is also positive at t equals 3, the particle is speeding up. If the velocity is negative, um, that means the velocity and the acceleration have opposite signs. They're sort of working against each other. The particle is slowing down. If I look and see that the velocity is uh, zero, then it'll be neither. So here's the sign chart that we did for the velocity of particle p uh, back in part b. And we see that at time t equals 3, would be in this interval right here where the velocity is negative. So because the velocity is negative while the acceleration is positive, the particle is slowing down. So here's our summary with justification. Particle p has acceleration pi squared radical 2 over 16 at time t equals 3. Particle p is slowing down because the velocity is negative while the acceleration is positive. Part D, write but do not evaluate an expression for the average distance 
between the two particles on the interval from 1 to 3. The distance between particle r and particle p is the absolute value of r of t minus p of t. You can understand that if you want to find the distance between the particles, you're going to subtract their positions. We need the absolute value because we don't care about the directionality. Um, this would be negative depending on which particle is on the left and which particle is on the right. That doesn't matter. We just want the distance between them, a positive number, so we do the absolute value. To find the average distance, we will use the average value formula, which I think of as integral divided by interval. So we will do the integral from 1 to 3 of this distance, absolute value r of t minus p of t dt. Now we need to divide by the interval, which uh, since we're going from 1 to 3, that's 3 minus 1. But of course, dividing the integral by 3 minus 1 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 2. So this is the average distance. By the way, here is the average value formula that we just used. If we wanted to find the average value f at c, we do integral divided by interval. In other words, we find the integral of f from a to b, and then we divide by the interval b minus a.